Hi guys, Rich Kim Retro here. Back with another pickups video and general chat from the yeah, from the YouTube meetup. Um, yeah, basically the previous weekend just gone. It's now Monday, and um, yeah, we went up to Western Supermare, drove up from Cornwall to Western Supermare, to a few game shops on the way up. Um, yeah, for the YouTube meetup, went up with Interghost, Gashead, sixty six, Emo Joe, Shocks, yeah, Shocks. Another guy, which I can't remember his name, but he's quite quiet all night. Yeah, but met up with those guys. Yeah, so I may as well just start from the beginning. So I drove up on Friday. Um, drove one of my mates into Plymouth. About, yeah, about 12 o'clock. And, yeah, because he wanted to go comic book shopping. So I basically left him there, and I just went to one retro game shop. Well, not really a retro game shop, but a second-hand shop. It's called Once in Plymouth. And I picked up a purple GameCube and the screen. And Alex and Shinobi. As you can see, the GameCube's not there. It's because I traded it in the next day. And there's like the battery power pack. And that was 15 quid. So yeah, when I get, when I do like go up country, I do like to go to a few um just like yeah, my retro road trips, a few little shops on the way up. So yeah, my next stop, yeah, my next stop was um Exmouth. So I popped him there to Let's Talks Games. He did have quite a big shop and I was like downsized. And I just basically took some um, DVDs and Blu-rays and a couple of games. I picked up games that I wanted and yeah, basically just got the trade in the same price as some games. So I picked up um, it's a demo version, I think. <laughs> it's a, yeah, full demo of Ico. Hey, it was really bad the last couple of days. Um, ESPN Extreme Games. Definitely, yeah, that's what that's one I always always forget to pick up. Always forget to pick up. And Geekaho Shooting King. Geekaho Shooting King. So yeah. So that was 9.99. Yeah, I traded some stuff in for that, which wasn't bad. Yeah, so I got got back on my back on my journey from um Exmouth into Exeter. And literally, as I was like driving towards, yeah, the basically to go on, I think it's the M4, or the M5, I think it's the M4. Um, yeah, there was literally like a massive tail back onto the roundabout, and I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on? So I quickly pressed my TA on my um, stereo, which is traffic announcement, and this said um, a horse box had um, turned over, and there was a horse loose on the motorway. So literally, I'm about to literally just go on the split way where you literally, no point of no return. So I'm like indicator thinking, fuck this. You know, it was, it was closed northbound and southbound, so both ways it was closed. So I literally pulled over into um, the services thinking, great, how am I going to get up to Exeter? Because normally it would only take, you know, from Exeter to, always to Western Sumer, it would only take like an hour. Not even that really. So yeah, so I got, got the iPhone out and looked and literally had to drive halfway to Yeovil, I think in Ilminster, in Ilminster, and then come back up to Taunton. So I don't, instead of going up like that, I had to go like that. So that's what I did. It's normally and that normally takes about probably about forty five minutes just uh, just to do that. But because everyone else had the same idea with their sat nows on the radio, it took like two hours. It was just crazy. Some crazy shit was going on. Why aren't you playing? Yeah, so yeah, so that was that was pretty crazy. So I finally got to Bridgewater at like three o'clock. Yeah, Bridgewater. There's um, three sort of like game shops there. There's Insane Games, there's Entertainment Zone, and there's um, KBS Collectibles. I went into Insane Games. I didn't really have anything I wanted at the time. I only quickly popped in there because I knew we were going ne there ne the next day with like the YouTube meetup. I went to um, yeah Entertainment Zone. And he had something in the window, which I've been looking for a while, which he had like a price on £200. And I just asked, because on Fridays he's not actually there, it's some other random woman. So I thought, yeah, I might get it cheaper. So I asked her how much, and she phoned the guy up. And he said it was um, 80 quid. I'll show you in a minute or later on at the end of the video what it was. £80. I thought, yeah, I really want that. I set my heart on getting that. So I sort of like, yeah, just walked away. Because um, he wasn't there, he couldn't do any trades in, because I didn't want to pay like cash, really. I'm like, damn it. The same woman. I sort of went in there and I paid quite a lot of. Yeah, I picked up those Game Boy games years ago, probably about a year ago actually. 
and he had lots of rare Game Boy games, all price marked. But I actually put like <laughs> the four ninety nine ones at the top and said, "These are all four ninety nine, aren't they?" <laughs> so I picked up quite a lot for like four ninety nine when clearly they had like nineteen pound on them, twenty pound on them, fifteen pound on them. So yeah. So then I went into um, yeah. So I left the shop thinking, "Great, we'll, we'll go there tomorrow." I didn't think Emo Joe knew about that place. He says he's been there a couple of times, but I thought it'd be a new place for shops for the guys to go. Um, yeah, so I went to KBS Collectibles, and yeah, I had like a ma I had literally like about four bags of like four Morris and Reusable bags, just full of all my trash games, just full of all my trash games, and I picked up some items I wanted. And I'm trying to think, where did I? Yeah, I sort of got some on the Friday <coughs> games and some games on the Saturday. But this is what I got on the Friday when I traded some stuff in. Some Dreamcast games, Vigilante Eight. <coughs> too offensive, I think. Yeah, too offensive. Also got Time Stalkers. Resident Evil 2 for the Dreamcast. Dragon's Blood. A box Dreamcast mouse. It was in better condition, but I think I might have squashed it in my car. VMU mouse. Record of Lobus War. Power Stone. I'm sure I got Power Stone, but it wasn't on my list, so I think I've got a feeling I've actually got that. Combat Zone. Not bad for a tenner. And Dracula for the Master System. So I picked up those games and I literally was just showing them all my trash games, and half of me sort of rejected because they were either the wrong disc in them. Instead of the original, it was like platinum, and instead of the platinum, it was like the original. Quite a lot of them had lots of scratches. He doesn't have a disc cleaning machine, so. And I think that came to about, I don't know, about 70 quid, 70 quid or so. And I had like a couple of PS2s, and he gave me, I think it was like £15 each for them. And I traded in like a Mega Drive, and he gave me £10 for a Mega Drive, and I just traded in sort of like some of my better games, and but yeah, I just picked all that up, so. So all the sometimes when I pick up a PS2 with like 20 games, they're just good trade for them. It was giving me like 50p each for them. So it was not that bad. Yeah, so that was yeah, so that was like um Friday. I finally got to Western Super Mayor, probably about six o'clock, six o'clock when the Morrisons had a bit of food. Stayed at my mate's house and we had a good laugh and got some pizza takeaway. Um yeah, so the next day, got up for the YouTube meetup, met up the lads um in the Sovereign Centre. <coughs> yeah, at eleven o'clock. And I think there's one guy I didn't know. I think it was maybe Shox. I don't. I always see Shox posting other people's comments, but I didn't actually follow him. If you know what I mean, I haven't seen any of his videos. But I knew most of the rest of the guys, so that was good fun. So yeah, so Emo Joe showed us around, and then we went to a cash converters or cash generator. What did they get in cash generator? Oh yeah, we went in cash generator, and I picked up. There's some really cheap PS1 games which I literally just picked up for the cases. I'm trying to think where I put them. I might have traded them in actually. <laughs> I might have traded them in for like, yeah, I remember buying them for like 24p and maybe trading them for like 50p each. So I don't actually have them. Or do I? I can't remember. Wait there. Hmm. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there's some of it. Where's the other thing? Well, basically, yeah, yeah, I went up to, went up to pay and in behind the counter they had Golden Axe for the Spectrum. This box. Where's it gone? Oh, here, oh, here are the games. There it is. Yeah, so I picked up just mainly for the case. There it is Thunderhawk. That was 24p. Wing over. That was 24p. Also, in a box for like 50p, they had um, PlayStation 2 demo. I think there might be a promo in there as well. Oh, yeah, it's just official PlayStation demo. Oh, yeah, net network access disc as well. And in behind the counter, I literally just saw on the side Golden Axe Spectrum version. And it says includes a free poster, and the poster's in there as well, which is brilliant. And that was 24p. I said, you got anything else um, out back or two? He goes, oh, we got loads of stuff that's coming. We need to sort it out. I go, I don't mind waiting five minutes. And then um, I expected to bring more Spectrum games. He said more of them. But he brought about 10 um, N64 games. 
So right in front of the guys, I was literally like, oh, cheers, guys. And they all sort of like, met me for five minutes thinking, you fucking bastards. <laughs> I can see them giving me evils already, mate. And I picked up Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie. They were actually 2 99 each. But I thought if I get them, I, I know I can get £5 trade in at least just on the day, if you know what I mean, when we go to the retro game shops. So that's what, yeah, that's what I got. So that was quite fluky and jammy. <laughs> we then went into MT Games, which was very collectible shops and the biggest collection of, of like Lego you've ever seen, figures. It's really good in there. On the retro side, there wasn't really much, much there really. The cabinets were pretty empty. It was really too expensive. So yeah, some guys got some good deals, I think. I think shocks. There were sort of like um, Game Gear, uh, Game Gear like cartridges with like the, the little case had like I don't know two ninety nine on it. So he just took it off and then put it on like a different Game Boy. <laughs> so it covered up that price. So we got that a bit cheaper. <laughs> um, yeah. So where do we go next? I think it's uh, M M I Games in Birmingham C. Oh yeah, we were driving to Birmingham C. And literally there was a car boot and there was like a sign just saying, car boot, car boot. And I literally just looked at Emo Joe thinking, yeah, we must have 10 minutes for a car boot. And it was like 10 to 1 and it said 1 o'clock. I'm thinking, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Let's just pop in here. And cars were coming out, so it looked like it had started early. So we paid a quid. Yeah, we paid a quid each to get in. And walked around for a bit. And I've noticed some PS... P games and Emo Joe literally was like literally man he was like he was like one of the little lizards you know he literally just picked it up and just grabbed it I'm like what the hell I guess I won't be getting that game then but yeah the affinities are like a pound or two pound I picked up Ponyo Po Pop Fever and he picked up a really good yeah really good sort of wonder song um, conversion for the PSP I forgot what it was called begin with G but he got that and I picked up yeah picked up Pokemon Soul Survivor or silver, sorry. Fitness it was four pound in the end. I got it for four pound. I think. Oh yeah, I got this and Mario Party Eight, and that was eight quid for the Wii because he had that. Um, I don't have eight Mario Party Eight at the moment because I traded it. <laughs> Literally half an hour later, I traded it in. And then there was a box of Mega Drive games. Um, she had like twenty pound on it. <coughs> um, there wasn't really sort of like much stuff in there to be honest. But yeah, we came back later on um, after walking around and I just offered her a tenner. There was probably about eight or nine games in there and the Mega Drive. Which I knew, if we were, because we were going to um, Bridgewater, I knew I could get £10 trading just for the Mega Drive. What was it, £5 trading? I can't remember. What, eight, I don't know. Yeah, basically I can easily earn my money back. I think, yeah, I think I paid £10 for it and then traded it in for like £14 and £15. So I sort of saved myself a fiver. Trading it in again. So then we went to MI Games in Birmingham Sea. Um, yeah, basically just a normal, like, video, normal sort of like, up-to-date video game shop down below the PS2 games. That's probably about as retro as they got. But upstairs, there was like a, a retro zone upstairs. But because he was on his own, it was some, once again, it was some other guy looking after the shop. He was like, oh, I can't let you up there. It's only me. I'm like, mate, there's only five of us in the shop and we're all the ones who want to go up there. So he sort of locked the door and we went upstairs. And I picked up a few games. Yeah, we sort of like, all looked around. Some games are sort of overpriced, some games were quite cheap, but I sort of like put them together, if you know what I mean. So this is what I got from up there. Yeah, MI games, that's it. I got Sentinel Returns. I'm sure I've got the first one, which is blue. Echo the Dolphin. Crime, crime Wave. Cyber Speedway. Something I haven't seen before is Sega Saturn Photo CD Operating System. So, yeah, that was £10. And then some, um, they had some um, Box Jaguar games. And that's this one Brutal, brutal Sports Football. Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Attack of the Mutant Penguins. Bugsy. Wolfenstein 3D. And Theme Park. I think there was someone else, I can't remember. Maybe not. Yeah, I literally got to go. I literally picked this up and go, mate, you know, because I'm getting quite a few, we can do us a deal. And he's like, oh, I need to phone the owner. So he's on the phone to him. 
and some of these sort of have the prices on the side. Like that one, that one had like twenty nine ninety nine on it. But I sort of like just covered it up in a way. <laughs> I just handed him like that, and he only saw the prices on the front, like four ninety nine. I'm like, mate, yeah. I'll pay five pound for each one, whatever. And he's and then he spoke to the guy on the phone. And he said, oh, you can knock a pound off. Each, I think it was for each of the Jaguar games. But the guy sort of um, when he totaled it up, did a pound off for each of the games. So instead of it being like sixty eight quid, it was like fifty eight quid. But yeah, that was quite funny. So I thought I got a good deal then. I got yeah, I got eleven games. That was quite funny. He didn't really know. He was he literally someone working in the game shop. He didn't have much knowledge about anything. So yeah, so that was really the only sort of cash I really paid on the Saturday. We then went to yeah, I forgot where where did we next go? Yeah, we went to Bridgewater. Went to Insane Games first, and I picked up Gundam Heroes. No, Guardian, Guardian Heroes. And once again, I had a bag full of shit. You know, just basically all my trash. Just all my doubles and that. And I took it in. He sort of rejected half of it. Because obviously he didn't he actually properly rejected it. So he just bought Don't want, don't want, don't want. Um, some of the guys bought some games off me. I think Interghost bought a couple of Game Boy games off me. Like Tetris DX and some other game. I think he got like three games for like three pound or something. Or two games for three pound. Um, Gashead, yeah, Gashead. He bought some um, Mega Drive games off me. Basically, I was gonna trade him in, but I only get like maybe one or two quid from him. And he got things like six games or seven games off me, and I was like, fifteen quid. Oh, I said twenty pound. He's like fifteen quid. I was like, yeah. I thought if I traded him, I'd only get, I wouldn't even get like nine quid from him. But he got some good titles, somewhere like missing manuals and stuff. But yeah, so I stop. Yeah. So where's my receipt? There's my trade receipt. The only good games I really traded in was um, Low Max Adventures. I only got like four quid for it, but it, the disc was scratched to fuck. I'm surprised he actually took it in. And yeah, had like no manual. Um, I traded in Final Fantasy VI and got a fiver for it, but once again the discs were quite scratched. But because it's like a high value game, they probably sell it for like 20 quid. It's worth them disc cleaning. Unlike some of the other like normal PS1 games where you get 50p or four, then it's not worth not worth disc cleaning them at all. So what else did I get? Yeah, so basically did like 40 pounds worth of games, traded in. So that was another that was sort of like another bag of games gone. Okay, we then went. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I got like different multiple piles. We then went back to Entertainment Zone in Bridgewater, and there's something I was thinking of getting, and it was like 80 quid, and basically all the games that got rejected from Insane Games, it was just all in a, all in a, like, a massive bag, and I'm like, you know, would I trade some of these in? And because he's a bit low on stock, he was sort of like, he was, he was sort of like, he was he was looking interested, but he was like sounding not interested, saying, oh, I've got loads of these games up up in the loft, or up, up in, upstairs on the second floor, I've got loads of games like this, oh, these aren't worth that much, they might be sitting on my shelf for ages. And I was sort of like nodding my head, thinking, yeah, I'm thinking I'll swap all these games for this, a Super Mario Brothers telephone. This was originally literally two years ago, 200 quid he had in it, and it got down to 80 pound. I couldn't, couldn't find it anywhere, to be honest. Can't find it anywhere. But yeah, so I had to reach sort of like the 80 pound mark. And I did have about, I think it was about 65, 70 games, but they were all pretty trashed PS1 games. I had a Metal Gear Solid, but I had like Platinum Disc 1 and like, but the original like Disc 2. <laughs> and he, he, I was sort of a bit short. I was short, um, I think it got to about 50, 60 quid. Uh, so I went back in the car and brought out a box M64, which I, which I picked up locally for £15 with like three or four games in. And I've already sold the game then, so I sort of, I've earned my money back, so sort of the M64 was just like, just a bonus really. So yeah, I think it was £50 actually got for, for those, um, yeah, for all my trash games. And I had an N64, the controller was a bit fucked as well. <laughs> you literally just went like that and went, so the controller was pretty destroyed and pretty pretty yellow as well from from smoking. So then I was like twenty pounds short after that, yeah, because it was eighty quid, yeah, 80, uh, yeah. I got to sixty quid. I think he only gave me ten pounds for the box N64, but it was pretty trash and pretty destroyed the box. So I gave him twenty quid and then just exchanged it for this. 
the 20 quid I sort of had by like selling them, um, yeah, selling Gashead, the, 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 um, the boys called the Finger Boy, the, the Mega Drive games, the 8 or 9 or eight, 7 or 8 Mega Drive games for like 15 quid and getting money from Intergoose for the, for Tetris. So yeah, so it didn't really cost me anything. So I picked this up, something unique in my collection, never seen it before. So yeah. So then we went to KBS Games, <laughs> this is down on the right. There's loads of them, go to Bridgewater, some good collectibles. And basically, ev everything I had like left to trade in was just all my, ru my rubbish, really, even, even more worse than before. But there's one thing that was in the shop that I wanted, and that was this. I picked up a Mars System one recently, and that was a Sega Mega Drive remote controllers. There's two of them. He had it priced at 50 quid. And I still had, um, yeah, I had three Mega Drives. Um, like, like I said, at the car boot, I picked up a Mega Drive for a tenner. And I was able to trade it into him for 14 quid. And then I had another two Mega Drives, so I traded them in. And I still had some bits left over. I think I kept back um, Resident Evil 3. Yeah, I think I kept back Resident Evil 3 for the GameCube, which I picked up recently. So I just did my exchanges as normal and picked that up. Yeah, so yeah, so I went with like loads of bag of games and came back with stuff I sort of needed for my collection. So yeah, so the Saturday night, oh, and we went back to Emo Joe's house. Room's a bit bit messy, mate, bit messy, but yeah, but a lovely collection, man. There's some stuff in there that I don't even have. I'm like, oh, I want that, I want that. <laughs> lovely, awesome NES games. Castlevania, I think I need, yeah, some, some stuff like that. I don't have a gold Zelda for the NES either, so I need to step my game up and get one of them, I think. So I had like a half an hour power nap in the spare room, I was knackered, I was like, ugh. Had a little power nap. Got changed ready and went out, met up with um, Intergoose and Gashead and the gang. No, Gashead went home actually, yeah, he went home. He didn't come out for the beers, so yeah, Shocks and Intergoose. Went up with him, and he's like, oh, who was the other mate called? I forgot what it's called, I don't know. Sorry about that, sorry, <laughs> if you're watching. Sorry about that, mate. Yeah, we went, we went back to the, had some food, went back to the travel lodge. Had a few beers, and Emo Joe was literally drunk and crazy and hyper just on the the Tesco's energy drinks. It was just the funniest thing ever. I've never seen anything like it. It was so funny, mate. It was fucking, it was so funny. He's like, have a shot of vodka? Nah, nah, have a shot of vodka. And he's like, fucking acting half drunk just by you drinking the little fucking, the power source, what they call it, the fucking Tesco energy drinks. That's funny, yeah, we went out and had a few, had a bit of a dance, a few, a few more beers. A few shocks. Shots. Yeah, it was, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um yeah, we just yeah, we I think we left the club quite early, about two o'clock. Trying to go back trying to get a taxi back to um, Emo Joe's and we phone up and it's like there's an hour wait for a taxi. I'm like, hour wait for a taxi in Western Superman. Seriously man. How can that be an hour wait for a taxi? Surely on Saturday nights we have like taxis for fun. So we decided to walk, Blah, seemed to take forever, but 45 minutes later, we got a, st we got a drink stomp on, had our food had our food on the way, and got up early for the car boot at like 6 o'clock, went to Cheddar, met someone from Metro Collect, that was a good laugh, just walking around, just having a chat really, I didn't really pick much up sort of like from there, I picked up some stuff, not quite sure. Basically, I got loads. Of, I got like a car boot part, but I can't remember which car boot I got it from. So this could be from Yeovil or it could be from Cheddar. But I picked up assault suits, Vulcan, Star Wars Battlefront, two, Resident Evil Outbreak, just some trade fodder, and that's Clash of the Titans. Crash Nitro Kart, Dragon Ball Z Badouken 2, Dragon Ball Z Badouken 3, Crash the Rotha Cortex, um, picked up some DS games as well, this is all trade fodder really, Professor Layton, somebody somebody, Pandora's somebody, <laughs> I think a couple of them had some points in, so I might just use the points and the lost future as well. They're like three quid each, so hopefully they'll be a good trade in. Trade in fodder. 
Um, what else? Uh, oh, also, yeah, also, there was all, um, when I spoke to the retro collect guy, and he said literally, he goes, oh, down the first aisle, because we got there, and I literally did not go down the first aisle. Oh, we got there, it was probably about three and a half rows, two and a half rows. I thought, oh yeah, never go down the first row because obviously it'd be traders. He goes, oh, you seen the guy down the first like, row? Um, he's got like loads of Atari games and loads of retro games. So I was like, whoa, legged it down there. It's up to us. And um, yeah, one of one of sort of like the, the sort of like the traders I know sort of in the area. He bloody was there with the box and loads of box Atari games. I'm thinking, fuck off. I'm like, damn, god damn it, rookie mistake. And there was like, there was a little, little like a tray of like cartridges, and I just picked up all the ones I need. And this went, yeah, literally, it's crazy. So all these, I think they were like 50p each. Crystal Castles? Canyon Bomber? Dodgem? Vanguard? Junior Pac-Man. Night Drive. He did literally have another 30 of them, but I just picked up the ones I wanted because I was like, there's literally, I'm like, they're going like this. And so is, the so's are like the lizard trader, trader. He's doing exactly the same. We're like looking at each other thinking, I need that one, I need that one. <laughs> I'm thinking, fuck off. Junior Pac-Man. Oh, I picked up two Junior Pac-Mans. What the fuck? <laughs> Ray Darlock. You fucking idiot. Subterranean or subterrane? Slot races? Berserk? Aimadar? Super Football? And Mario Brothers for the Atari. Also picked up, I think these might be sealed, they look sealed anyway. Space Armada for Intervision. And tennis. Yeah, these were on the floor, so I'm literally on the floor. As soon as I'm on the floor picking them up, fucking mate was on the floor picking them up as well, and I'm thinking, fuck off. So yeah, and then I picked up. Um, they had some Philips CDI games at the. At, literally, yeah, he had, he had quite a few of them. And I picked, yeah, I picked some up in a rush and realised some of my fucking like movies and stuff. Literally, I have no interest in it at all. Thinking, great. I think they're like four pound each, and I got them, got them down to like three quid each. But these are the ones I'm not even bothered about. Monty Python <laughs> digital CD. I guess it's just a DVD, isn't it? Live with Monty Python. But the main one was like Pack Panic. Put the cardboard cut out. It's all about Mad Dog McCready. Laser Lords. No, this game looks fucking good. I don't know what this is about. It looks like a, I don't know, Captain Blood kind of game, but not quite. Alien Gate. And who shot Johnny Rock? <laughs> <laughs> He did have some more, but literally, I was picking them up, and so, again, we were like, <laughs> I was like, for fuck's sake, and I was like, fuck off, man, fuck off. But, I had, uh, yeah, because, um, yeah, the car boot, yeah. I, did, actually, I do actually know him, he is good, to be honest, he is a good lad, and that. Sometimes when he's got games, he, he sells at car boot, so sometimes if games are there for a while, they have, like, four or five pound on. If, if they're there too long, you can literally just go up and just say, I'll give you two quid. And in some weeks, you'll be like, no, nah, no, nah, no way. And sometimes you just go to say two quid and be like, yeah, I guess he has to like, sometimes have to pay rent or he has to meet a kind of like target each day. So I did pick up, actually pick up, yeah, picked up some um, Amiga games or Atari ST games. So I picked up Elf. This is actually from him, actually. Speedball 2. Box is a bit bad. Trolls. Blood Wang? Wing? I don't know. Blood Wang. I don't know. Somebody blood. If anyone knows any details about that. Killing Grounds 2. 
and Star Trek 25th anniversary. <laughs> I want to play this. This game looks good. It's quite funny, and that's an Amiga 1200 game. So actually picked up them from him. Not at that car boot. I think from the car boot of the day before or at, at Yeovil was there. So I picked that up from him. Also picked up some random PS2 demos. PS2 demo. Tekken Tag Team demo. Another network access disc. Two games. Another like PlayStation. One. Yeah, so after we were ruffling through that, paid the guy and just went, yeah, went back around car booting with Emo Joe. We suddenly just went walking down and I saw I see Pac-Man the board game. I'm like, it's Pac-Man the board game. Whoa, there's Joe, he's like legging it, he just picks it up, I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, I'm like, you take a little bugger, you take a little bugger. <laughs> I was like, lucky I've already got it, I'm thinking, oh it's Pac-Man and Emo Joe. Mm. Get got there before me. I was like, yeah, cheeky bastard. But yeah, that was funny. Um, also, yeah, also that Shadow Car boot, I picked up Game Boy Pocket. This is four quid and it came with Pokemon Blue. I don't have a black one. It's got no battery cover. It's good to see you. Also, we went inside like the market into um, yeah, in, in the shed a bit, and we were just like walking around, and they had a green Game Boy Pocket and a case, which was four quid. And Emo Joe was like, "Oh, this has been here for ages," and I just offered her three fifty for it, and she took it. And then I sort of we wa I walked around for about half an hour, just chatting to Emo Joe and the guy from Retro Collect, and didn't pick up anything else at all. Did not pick up one thing. So I sort of turned my camera glasses off. I was thinking, soon when I turn this on, it's going to be like, I've got to find something, aren't I? And then literally, two minutes later, and then I quickly put my glasses back on, quickly filmed it, but I picked up um, some Master System 1 games and some random cables. I've got two um, Mega Drive 2 controllers. You all know what they look like. Um, a Mega Drive 1 power adapter. And it might be Mega Drive 2 actually because I've got the Mega Drive um, 2 RF lead. I've also got two NES Nintendo pads. And I also have this game in the box as well. So, well, surprise from Sonic for the Mars system. I might need some of these manuals actually. Kalax. Tasmania. Sonic 2. <coughs> this might all be trade fodder to run us. Castle of Illusion. Randstein, or yeah, Randstein. And Jungle Book. And as I was rifling through um, the rest of it, there was also Secret of Evermore in it. So I've never seen it before. I've seen people post it on like Retro Collect on Facebook and stuff, trying to sell it. But I've never seen it in the wild before. I'm like, oh, mate, how much you want for the box? And uh, he did that. He did sort of like look like a trader, like an old, like an old trader, because he was like saying, "Oh, <clears throat> you're gonna buy that thing next week to someone else. Are you gonna buy that week thing off me this time?" I was thinking, "Oh, it's a trade. I thought he wanted ridiculous money for it, but I was able to get get it all for I think it was seven pound. <laughs> so it's worth seven pound just for that. And the Master System games, hopefully, I'll be able to get you know pound or fifty p each for them. Trader men for the controllers as well." And I also picked up this. Welcome to the jungle. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Random. Random sign. I think it's from Game Station, actually. Yeah, Game Station 2004. That was a pound. And that's about it. Yeah, that's everything. Oh, I picked up some um, Commodore 64 games. They're just over there, but I literally cannot be bothered. Cannot be bothered. I'm literally about to go and get the keys to my flat as well. So yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd do a quick video before going to get the keys because I can easily just upload this or by the time I come back later on and don't have to paint the house or whatever. Might, my film might be uploaded. Yeah, brilliant weekend. I'll definitely be going next year or hopefully there's another meeting and maybe at the end of the at the end of the summer or something the YouTube meet up. One at the beginning, one at the end because I like meeting up the guys, having a few beers, doing a good few trades. So I'm about to move, so I need to sort of like catalogue this quickly. Pick out stuff that I don't want, just put it on the side and get ready, yeah, get ready for the move. So yeah, cheers, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. 
And um, yeah, cheers. Oh, this is Shadow Raiders. I used to love this sort of like when I was like 16 years old. I used to watch this all the time on Sky um, Sky One. World Plan War Planets Shadow Raiders. Same graphics as Beast Wars, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it's quite funny. It's funny all these cartoons always seem to have the same like ten voices and probably last fifteen years of fucking all the all the animated things in America. But yeah, oh, I also picked up the official Sega Mega Drive Power Tips book. But yeah, this was with the Mega Drive. Yeah, this was with, with like the ten pound of the Mega Drive, the Mega Drive games, which I was able to trade in. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant week. I didn't spend too much money to be honest, but. With my flat and that, it was just good to trade in all my trash because it was so much crap I had. Half of it didn't even work, but I was glad to change it. Um, yeah, glad to, glad to trade it in. <sighs> Knackered. Okay, guys, cheers. Thanks for watching. Um, I might be, yeah, I might do like a before, after, and during photo filming of my um, games room. But yeah, yeah, cheers, guys. Oh, yeah, check out channels of Interghost, Shocks, Emojo, and Interghost, and the other fellow I can't even remember, so. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>